Hi everyone, this is Carolis. Thank you guys for checking out this video or if you're on the podcast, thank you for listening to the podcast. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that I got from one of my subscribers. He sent me a message. This is from Ankit. Thank you Ankit so much for sending me this message. His question to me was, he said, how do you handle last minute and critical change from client in the sprint? Um, and he also went on to explain a little bit about his in environment. So he is working in a BAPO role and he really find it difficult when they have to prioritize and deprioritize stories while they're in the sprint, right? During the sprint, they're making changes like that. And so he wanted to know if this is recommended and how to prevent that, how to handle that. And so he feels like it's a constant disturbance in the sprint because of all of these um, changes. Also, he says that he is kind of handling some of the prioritization, but it's coming, you know, he has to make the change because of the client. The client is the one that's, that's kind of driving it. And so his environment is a little bit fast paced. They are doing uh, one week sprints and yeah, one week, <laughs> one week sprints very quick. And also, um, you know, he's dealing with regulatory reporting and government bodies and so on. So there's a lot of compliance issues involved there. Um, he says they're trying not to touch the sprint once they have agreed to it. Um, but they release every week. And so he wanted to find out from me, you know, what I thought about that. So how to handle constant changes while you're already in the sprint well you already know what i'm going to say right this is not recommended right you really don't want to be changing things while you already agree to the sprint for obvious reasons right so you know really and truly it, it sometimes depends on your role in the organization in his case he's playing a proxy product owner role along with the business analyst role but it depends on your role because if, and the size of the team too, because if you're working with a huge set of team members and they have bandwidth that they can have, you know, a few people slice off to go do this really urgent thing and then come back and join the rest of the team, maybe it's not that critical, right? Um, so it could depend on also the scope of the change, like how, how big is this change? If it's just like a label change, change a label, fine do it <laughs> you know what I mean it could be several of those that's very annoying but you know it's the size of the change it's the size of the team and it's your role on the team as well but in any case in all cases whenever there's a change in the sprint you really need to pull the team together you need to say hey this is what happened we now have this change we're gonna have to resize you know, we have to size this ticket and see where it can fit in the sprint or if we have to take something out to accommodate it. And we need to have the team really um, chime in on this and figure this out together, right? It's never, it should never be here, go do this now. <laughs> Along with everything within the sprint, you really don't want to do that because that is not teamwork and that is not how Agile is supposed to go. You really want to bring the team together, size this new change, compare it or evaluate it against what you're already committed to doing and see what the impacts are. But even before they size it, you as a BA need to go and make sure you do all the elicitation requirements so that the ticket is correct or the user story is correct, right? So you have all the details, you understand what they're trying to do, you know why they're doing the change. All that needs to happen before it gets into a discussion with your development team. Now in Ankit's example, they're doing one week sprints. So that alone to me is a little alarming because there really isn't much time to elicit requirements properly and to get things, depends on what the change could be. I mean, within a week is very short time to get anything done and ready and prepped and discussed and they release every week, right? So it's, it's a very, uh, it's very, it feels very rushed to me at least. So one suggestion could be since you're having this problem with constantly changing requirements maybe you could think of doing a two-week sprint to give yourself enough time to have the requirements fleshed out better to you know have the discussions and then to plan it for the next 
sprints. I think two weeks might be a better time frame. I don't know your environment, so just throwing that out there. Maybe you could consider it with your team to really switch from a one-week model to a two-week model because of the complexities you're having. Um, the other thing is because it's driven by the client, I would suggest that you push back on the client in the ways that you can. So if it's a case where, okay, they gave you the full requirements and then they changed the requirements on you and gave you something brand new that you didn't anticipate before, then you need to now go back and, and say, hey, well, we can do this, but this is the implication. This is the timeline that we're going to be able to accommodate that. We're already in the sprint doing this, so maybe we could do it for the next sprint. And if they don't want to agree to that, maybe there's a charge that you can add to that. Maybe there's a fee for interrupting the sprint. I don't know. But you have to push back in the ways that you can. Maybe you can charge more money because this is something that was all brand new, wasn't talked about, is a whole new scope, is a whole new change. It wasn't planned for, you know, you need to put a price tag uh, to deter that. Or... You talk, tell them that it's going to take more time, right? So you have to push back on the client in some ways. And also, it could also be an indication that you haven't done good requirements, right? It could be that the reason why everything seems new is because we didn't dig deep enough when we had our elicitation discussion with the clients. And so things are uncovering when you get into the meat of it that didn't come up before. And it speaks to having more dialogue with the client, understanding their use case some more, doing some more user journey mapping, understanding their jobs to be done, right? So that you could flesh all these things out and make sure they agree. Also, I don't know if you have a UX designer or you have any mockups, but it's always good when you have the conversation with the client to show them something. So if you took the information that they gave you and if you had the UI or even just a wireframe, you could walk them through the flow early on get them to pick it apart get them to sign off on what you're going to give them that way there is hopefully less disruption when you actually start building and when you're in the sprint because you really don't want that to happen um so those are two things that i think you can do um the other thing too could possibly be just prioritization so i know in ankit's case he's the one organizing and prioritizing prioritizing um the backlog but maybe there needs to be more discussions around the priority because if you're putting something in and then the sprint starts and you got to take it out and do something else in and take it out put something else in it's very disruptive very very disruptive and people are not going to work well that way people need to know this is what we're doing and for this block of time and that's what we're working on and then the next block of time we have those you know those stories ready and they work on that so when you're constantly taking things in and out it really disrupts the, the mindset of what they're planning to work on. It, you know, it disrupts just the thinking of what's dependent or what's not dependent. And so you will eventually miss dependencies or the quality might be wrong because you didn't, you know, you didn't have enough time to think through it well, <laughs> to be honest. So those are the things I would say, reevaluate how you're prioritizing. Maybe you need to buffer in time for changes because it's, if it's something that you really can't control, you, def, you just have to buffer in some time for changes and um, maybe estimate your stories a little bit more higher because there's uncertainty and pad some user stories into your sprint to say, okay, we're going to account for the fact that we're always having changes. This is not the recommended thing to do. You really want to minimize the change, but just, I don't know, because it's government and ambulance and urgent things and critical things <laughs> that industry is a little bit different so maybe you're buffering some time into your sprint maybe you need to rethink how you're prioritizing your stories maybe you need to talk to the clients more and uncover their use case better um, maybe you need to walk them through the workflow a little bit earlier and make sure you have time to do that maybe you need to extend the life of your sprint if it's possible to from one week to two weeks and um if you can charge them for the disruption, <laughs> that would be a great deterrent for them to stop disrupting it, right? So those are the things I think you can do. In every environment, in every Agile team, we all have to deal with critical or urgent issues. And even when we plan the sprint to the best of our ability, there are things that can crop in that we didn't um, plan for. But the way you manage that is to have the conversation. The way you manage that is to make sure you talk to the team and say, hey, this thing happened. Here's what we have to do. 
Uh, what do you guys think? Can we resize the story? Can we fit it into the sprint? If not, what can we take out to accommodate this? Is this very urgent? You know, which team members can dedicate their time to doing this, etc., etc. Conversation is the key. When people know what's going on, they're willing to work together to help better than if things are being thrown over the wall and it's complete chaos. <laughs> when things come in the sprint and come out the sprint and come in and they don't know when, they don't know what to expect. That is not a good way to work. That is not recommended. And so for everybody who's having the same problem, I hope that these tips will be helpful for you. And you know, if you have any questions, please email me carolisblog at gmail.com or you can find my, in my LinkedIn page. My LinkedIn page is called Carolis um, Business Analyst Training. I just launched that page uh, last week, so I'll be happy if you go over there and follow that page. Um, so message me there or you can go on my Facebook and send me a message there. And I've been very, very good these days on responding to my, my, my emails, my LinkedIn, you know, so I've, I've been catching up. <laughs> so Ankit, he messaged me early in the morning. I respond right away. So he's very, very lucky. He's lucky. I got his answer right away and I was able to help him with that. So I don't mind. So message me, let me know, send me a, an email. And uh, that's what I have for you guys today. I hope this was useful and I'll see you next time.